The Office of Energy Development was created out of Governor Herbert's 10-year strategic energy plan. And our job for the state really is to advance Utah's energy economy. Utah is home to three of the 100 largest oil fields in our country and three of the 100 largest natural gas fields in our country. In fact, we've got about 1.3 trillion barrels of in-place resource here in Utah when it comes to oil. So Utah is really fortunate to have a lot of innovative companies, innovative thinkers when it comes to energy production because energy production is complicated. Uh, EGI is one of the foremost researchers when it comes to identifying new resources, identifying new reserves, and really looking at the best practices around how we're going to extract those resources. EGI stands for the Energy and Geoscience Institute. We've been around for 43 years. Our roots go back to 1972 to the time of President Nixon. We work primarily in three core areas, fossil energy, geothermal energy, and carbon management or carbon sequestration. The fossil energy industry is probably the biggest industry in the world. It is involved in countries on every continent and a lot of expense is in the business of looking for energy, drilling for energy, and then producing it by building plants, pipelines, ships, etc., to transport and market it around the world. You know, the value of oil in the Uinta Basin simply can't be overstated. It has a tremendous benefit to our community and our economy. And to be honest with you, most people would say it's not overstating that probably 50% of the economy and 80% of the employment is related to energy production in the Uinta Basin. We have these companies that are in the oil and gas business uh, from upstream, midstream to downstream. One of our companies called Peak Well Service. Everyone knows that the, there's a drilling rig that goes and drills the hole or the well, but after the drilling rig leaves, then there needs to be what's called a workover rig. These are big pieces of equipment that are able to lift hundreds of thousands of pounds of pipe out of the ground through these derricks or these workover rigs. And it is hard work oil we get out here, it's got a lot of paraffin or wax in it, and so the byproduct, they can make like all the plastic things, like say your hard hat, your television screen, your dishwashers, linoleum floors, dashboard in your car, everything. Most people think that when you're pumping for oil, that just oil is coming up, and that's rarely the situation. Oil uh, sits thousands and thousands of feet below the ground surface in what was ancient seabeds that have been covered over. So not only are you pumping up oil, uh, you're pumping up water, sand, dirt, everything that was down there. So that's where IWM, uh, Integrated Water Management, comes into play. This facility is quite unique in that it is a place that all the waste streams from oil and gas production can come and uh, be deposited here in a controlled environment. Here we have uh, all double-lined leak detection pits with uh, ground monitoring wells all around them. We really strive to make the environment a better place. It is important that we put the water back where it came from so that it does not go in the atmosphere, it is not spilled out along the roads. Make sure the oil goes back to the refinery and is used for why they brought it out of the ground. We specialize in the safe loading and transporting and delivering of crude oil. The barrel count that we haul would probably range anywhere from 260 to 300 barrels depending on the gravity of the oil. These are insulated trailers and so when the oil is transferred onto these trailers it, it holds in the heat. It's important because if it's, if it's cold the oil is going to set up, the wax will set up. The crude comes off the tank into the waxy crude tanks, and then from the tanks, they goes to a distillation column. And what that does is it separates the crude oil into various fractions, so diesel oil, gasoline, other lighter components. And at the very tail end of the process, we have these hydro treaters, which remove sulfur from the process and we make cleaner fuels. Tesoro is very committed to the environment. We've made significant investments over the past five years in order to have cleaner fuels for the Wasatch Front in order to reduce emissions. And the units that you see behind me reduce sulfur and benzene and make cleaner products. 
So currently we're in tier two gasoline products, which means that refineries and companies have to sell a gasoline that is less than 30 parts per million um, sulfur. Tier three will reduce that to 10 ppm. Tesoro has committed to make the capital investment to produce and sell tier three gasoline here in Utah. Tier three fuels lower the amount of sulfur within um, gasoline. As you have the sulfur in the gasoline or the benzene in the atmosphere, and you also have benzene, which has been determined as a carcinogen, which is, is not good for our health. The reason that Tesoro um, wants to make sure that we're manufacturing and selling Tier 3 compliant fuel in Salt Lake City and the Wasatch Front is because if you look at the EPA website, where is Tier 3 fuels going to have the most impact? Right here. So we want to be a part of the solution. It is important that we maintain our production of oil, but that we do it environmentally safe. But more importantly, is that we have people involved in the production of oil who care and who want to do it right. Everything that we use in our lives, just look around. It was made through natural gas and oil byproducts. Stop and think about the folks that work to bring that to you and that we're all working hard and that not only are we concerned about safety and the environment, but we know that these are essential products that need to be brought to each of us to enjoy the standard living that we have.